us about some of these games uh, because I think they're remarkable for all of our kids. Sure. Hi. Well, I would say um, kind of starting with the lower end and, and working our way up, we have uh, two great kids games. The first one is called Crazy Legs. Yeah. I love this game. Yeah, and what, what's, what's nice about Crazy Legs is is it's almost like it's a whole workout for kids. There are these cards that have different exercises or there's different yoga poses. And as you go around the game board, you have to stop and do that yoga pose or do that exercise for the entire duration of your turn before it comes back around to being your turn again. So, you know, when you get four or five people playing crazy legs, you're getting a lot of exercise in. And uh, on the good side for the kids who are usually all wound up anyway, it's a great way to channel all of that excess uh, kid energy that they would normally use to jump on your couch cushions or do laps around your dining room table. This is a great one to play during the holidays, especially when you got relatives visiting because everybody has to do it. My husband and I had to do the yoga poses with our son and we had some relatives that were very visiting and our house looked like, uh, you know, people were in all these poses. It was really fun, but you get in some good stretching and some good exercise and we were also making fun of each other. Uh, it was a really, really fun game, Crazy Legs. For those busy kids who aren't going to sit through a whole game, great, great game to be able to play with them. That's right. We also, uh, we introduced another brand new uh, kids game this year called Zippity Doo. Yes. Zippity Doo is this one right here. And Zippity Doo is actually sort of a kid's take on a game that we've been doing for years since this was one of our first games at Endless Games called Encore. And Encore is a game where you get a word and you have to sing a song with that word in the song lyrics. So what we did with Zippity Doo was we basically took the encore gameplay, but instead of words, we used picture cards. Love so it. the kids who are playing look at the, the six picture cards laid out, and as soon as they can come up with a song with one of the pictures in it, like Knick Knack Patty Whack, Give the Dog a Bone, I snatch that card, I win that card, and as you go through the deck, you, you want to win the most cards to win the game. Just a really basic, simple, sing-along kids game that you can take on the road. It's basically Absolutely. a deck of cards. I was just going to say, take it in the car. It's great. And for our kids who love to sing and are engaged when they're singing, great, great game. Zippity-doo. Love yep. that. Thanks. And then we've got really kind of our, our, our real sort of wheelhouse, our specialty, which has been kind of more in the party game area. Uh, we've been doing Name 5 for a few years now, and Name 5 is one where it's all about can you name five Disney princesses or can you name five Christmas movies. It's all about um, general trivia where the, the goal isn't so much to come up with one answer but to name five answers within the category. So that's been one that we've, uh, it's been one of our top sellers here for the past couple of years. And and, and, I, and not to be underestimated for our kids on the autism spectrum, this is a great game because it forces them to think of things in categories. These There's a whole bunch of lessons in the skills program that are, have to do with gen, general knowledge and coming up with categories of things. And when you run out of ideas, you can be playing this game with your kids and building their flexibility, building their cognition, building their language skills. It's brilliant for our kids on the spectrum. Yeah, and you know what? And, and in building all of those skills, you're really, you're building their self-esteem, their self-confidence, yes. and, and their, uh, you know, desire to want to play these games and play them with other with other kids. Absolutely. Donate. Great game. Love it. But well, speaking of categories, that leads nicely to uh, a brand new party game for this year, Switcheroo. And Switcheroo is pretty much a category-based game where You've got category cards, and you've got cards that have uh, letters on them. So on your turn, you're either going to play a letter card on the category. So if it's something in the fridge that always expires faster than expected, maybe I have the letter M, and I play my M letter for milk. And then maybe you're up next, and you could either do something in the fridge that expires faster than expected. Maybe you say L, I don't know, lettuce. Or... You can play off that letter M that was still there for, for when I said milk and change up the category. So now you, you put down a card that says automobile makers and you say Mazda. So basically it's going into that category frame of mind, but at the same time you can switch it up by either playing a letter or switching up the whole category altogether. There's a whole thing in building language. There's a set of lessons called intraverbals. Uh, these are verbal operants. And, and basically what you're working on here, Brian, is those intraverbals. And for those of you who want to build conversation, uh, this is the game to be able to do this. Great flexibility. This is brilliant. Yeah, you know, I mean, and that's how I, I know I 
really talk that way where I zig and I zag all over the place before I actually get to my end point. And this is a great game that, that sort of epitomizes that because there are those zigs and those zags and you just want to try to uh, keep pace with the, the direction of the game, which is going to flip flop love around. It. I, I cannot yeah. wait to play this with my son. Okay. And, and just finally, I wanted to just point out Oddly Obvious, which is one of my personal favorites. Uh, it's a game where you get these uh, letter cards and uh, these are all the answers and I have the clues on the back. So for example, if I give you the clue and I say the, the word is, the clue is weight loss, the answer on the front of the card is enlightenment because ah. it's oddly obvious. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so I the, the whole game is, is all about those cards. That's one of my personal favorites. I I agree. I, I love this as well. But I also think there's so many different ways that you can use this game if you've got kids on the spectrum because they're, all the words are in different colors. Mm -hmm. So you can just be, for kids who are a little bit younger, if you're playing with a family, you can say, find the word that's written in red that starts with a B. Um, or, or, you know, and, and they're on the back, the questions, you can pick from them because some of them are easier too. So you can do it at all different levels with kids. It's a brilliant, brilliant game. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. One of my personal favorites. So those are, uh, we really try to have something for everyone, whether you're, you know, four and five and want to play Zippity-Doo or Crazy Legs, or as you get older, you want to play some Switcheroo, Oddly Obvious, Name Five, and, uh, you know, the whole, the tower, of course, corner, the whole gamut. They're wonderful. But you left out one of my favorites. You left out the Christmas Pickle. Well, you know what happened is I knocked it over behind me. And as a result, I couldn't, uh, I, it just completely slipped my mind. This is actually really neat. This is not a game in the sense of you're going to sit around and play this uh, for an evening's worth of fun. It's, uh, it's more of like a scavenger hunt type of thing. This, this is something families have done for years. In fact, some people say it's, a, it's an old German Christmas tradition. Other folks say it originated during the Civil War. But whatever the case of uh, the Christmas pickle may be, it's a fun way to add a little extra Christmas magic. What it is is after Christmas morning, the presents are done and kind of the uh, all the hard charge excitement is dying down a little bit. There's still one last gift that we give you pickle wrapping paper. So there's a pickle present that's wrapped up and still under the tree. And the person who gets to open that present is the player or person who can find the ornament, the pickle ornament, which is hidden on the Christmas tree. And this is a pretty fairly small ornament here, plus the fact that it's green, it really does hide in well into the Christmas tree. So the Christmas pickle is a fun little scavenger hunt to do Christmas morning and just give you a little uh, added present there for uh, after the, the craziness has, like I said, started to, to, to wind down a little bit. I love it. It's a great, great gift. This is a this is a wonderful thing to, to gift for to teachers, for aides. It's a great, anybody who's got kids is gonna love the Christmas pickle. Uh, Brian, Ryan, all of these toys, how can we get them? Best bet is to check us out at EndlessGames.com. Uh, a lot of these uh, toys are available at, like I said, try to shop locally and go to the, uh, you know, to the mom and pop store down the street or your local toy store. Um, if, you, if you find yourself in the Toys R Us, you can find some of these there. Barnes & Noble's the same way. Uh, Amazon.com has a lot of them. But, uh, you know, try to... Uh, support the local retailers and the independent retailers. And, and if they're not currently carrying uh, something you like here, the tower or switcheroo, just ask them and say it's by Endless Games and hopefully they know how to find me. And, and they, well, endlessgames.com, they can always find you there. 